Um, I would say nine, nine, nine point five out of ten for both guys. So good stuff. So this is another session. This should be exciting, right? Three-handed true teller Duca Poker, who also retired a few years ago. So we got a big hand coming up. OTB limps the small blinds, and he still does that nowadays. It's a it's a good play. A Duca Poker makes it four x, which means that OTB can tighten up a little bit. So he's still going to limp three, but a decent amount as well as limp call, despite the slightly worse odds. 9-4 do so this board is kind of blank you know Iduka can have all the sets OTB probably doesn't have pocket nines but he can have fours and deuces OTB probably doesn't have two pair much you know he has hands like sevens and nine seven and king nine ace nine that type of stuff so Iduka is definitely ahead on this board but it's not like OTB's got nothing wow so Iduka bets a little over 110 percent pot so he's basically saying Fuck you, OTB. You don't have a set of nines. I do. I have all the over pairs. Um, and you're not, just not going to be able to check raise me here. You're not, you're not going to be able to check all down enough. So you can employ a million strategies on this board. You can bet really small, medium, big, massive like Aduka did. All strategies have merits. You just have to balance them out properly. OTB decides to check calls. So I'm putting them on mostly a pair. The six changes... The board somewhat, you know, 5-3 gets there, 6s get there. OTB can have 9-6 suited a decent amount of the time. But it doesn't it doesn't make Iduka too scared, right? So Iduka bets 8k, which is okay. Um, you would think he bets even bigger given the flop bet because he's saying I've got an overpair better most of the time. And OTB calls, so, you know, I'm putting OTB on something like a 6 plus a draw. A pair plus a flush draw, maybe a naked flush draw, and a lot of 9x. Maybe some hands like pocket 7s, pocket 8s, uh, maybe and like ace 5, but that would be quite light. The 10, it improves Induka way more. You know, Induka can have more random 10x with the hearts, or 8 7, or 10 8, so pretty good card for him. And he goes all in. Wow, that's an aggressive play. So Induka could be doing this with a one pair over pair, or even and like ace 9, maybe, because he knows that OTB doesn't hit a 10 very often. Or maybe he just has like two pair plus. So OTB has to call here with, you know, a decent amount of hands. And he does call. Um, Iduka has queens. So this line makes a lot of sense with his hand, right? Like he has a hand on the flop, which needs protection, but it's very good. On the turn, he's happily betting. And on the river, he knows OTB can have him beat, but not so often. So is his strategy balanced? I don't know. Actually, I'm pretty confident it's not. But, you know, in a vacuum, it's a great play, right? You just put piling in the money with the with the, the, the vulnerable good hand. OTB calls with king, nine. So he's thinking that the duke can still have some hands like seven, five, some hands like hearts. Maybe he barrels off a hand like queen, jack, etc. Um, and there's a couple other things involved. Or maybe he even has a hand like deuce three that he turns into a bluff. So I think a duke plays a... Seven and a half out of ten. OTB's play, I'll give him a seven and a half out of ten as well, despite losing the 97k pot. So it's an interesting game. This one happened a few years ago, so you know, they're probably both hunting True Teller, but True Teller is a very good player himself. So it's not, you know, it's not a game you'd be you'd be dying to play, right? Because all of these guys are very tough. Katya folds, old school gangster reg. Old school gangster OTB raises, just a min raise. And limitless calls. So Jack 10 Deuce is a pretty good bo board for both players. Limitless is going to defend lots of hands like King Jack, Queen Jack, Jack 10, etc. But OTB has Jacks and Tens always, and Limitless doesn't always have them. So OTB can do many different things here. He can bet a lot and small, he can bet bigger, he can bet big and small. Most likely, he's going to do something very, very complicated. Super complicated, betting less than a quarter pot. And about 25 snickers. Limitless calls. So Limitless is not representing a very strong hand, right? Because he didn't even raise against less than a quarter pot. The five doesn't change that much, although both guys, I guess, could have pocket fives. Jack five. Uh, OTB doesn't have jack five, but Limitless could. So on this turn, OTB goes for the very, very big overbet. I think it's a pretty good play. You know, he, he's missing value with a lot of hands in his range, and he wants to get some value back right now. If he has a hand like ace-jack, it's just nuts, right? 
limitless calls, pots already 12K. The nine definitely changes things because OTB can have like maybe queen eight, eight seven, king queen. He probably doesn't hit two pair too often because he wouldn't overbet so big with jack 10 or 10 nine, but it's not the worst card. And he goes for a small-ish overbet, basically saying he's got two pair or better, but not even always, right? Because he doesn't have jack nine and 10 nine very often. So he's putting pressure on them and this trying to pressure his queen jack, king jack, king 10, queen 10 type of range. Limitless calls. Ooh, OTB has eight, seven of spades and limitless. We'll never know. So on the flop, I mean, you can check this back. You can bet big, you can bet small. On the turn, same thing. Your hand is not very good, so you can't just go crazy and bet every single draw every single time because you're going to end up being way too weak on the river. But sometimes uh, it works. And on the river, he has basically the nuts, right? Limitless doesn't have queen eight unless he has clubs. And he doesn't have king queen always, right? Because sometimes he check raises the flop or he three bets pre or, you know, he check folds the turn or check raises the turn. So to be he's very comfortable betting his 8-7 here. And Limitless likely had some kind of like pair plus straight block or some kind of two pair hand. So I would say 7 out of 10 for OTB. Se sorry, 7.5 out of 10 for OTB and Limitless will never know. We got a different lineup once again. We got Katya and Fish in OTB, but we got Candela 2005 in there and the OP. Well, what should we do? Should we three bet here? I mean, if the board is five for deuce, you want to have some straights, right? Yeah, maybe not this time. I'll fold. OTB three bets. Otherwise, we wouldn't be in this hand. We wouldn't be watching. So he three bets quite, kind of big, 12 and a half big blinds. And Katya calls. 10 6 4 is like a, a decent board for both. OTB hits pocket tens here a lot, but sixes and fours probably not. He has ends like jack 10 and 10 9 and over pairs, so it's not that scary of a board for him, though Katya can half sets for sure. So he goes with 40% pot, which seems okay. And Katya calls. So Katya's repping a lot of floats like Queen Jack, King Queen, Ace King, you know, 8 7, and then pairs. Katya will not be folding much on this uh, on this board. Turn is a seven, which favors Katya for sure. He will have more six sevens. He will probably have more nine eights. He will probably more have more, um, you know, sevens. You know, he will have more hands like 10 9 that are just, you know, pretty good. So OTB wisely checks. And Katya bets small. So Katya is saying, I just have like, a, you know, a pretty thin value protection hand, but I'll also throw in some good hands so you can't just shovel in on me and I, got, I can do nothing about it. OTB calls. So OTB is representing hand like seven, eight, eight, nines, a 10, maybe a set, maybe hand like aces. Maybe he checks even stronger than that. Even more strong hands. Pocket tens and pocket eights are pretty strong to be checking here. And now on the river, just 29 and a half K in the pot. Katya shoves. So what is Katya repping at, at this point? Maybe he stabbed the hand like queen jack or king queen on the turn and he's shoving that. He's got two pairs. He's got some sets and occasional straight. OTB calls. Ooh. And OTB ships a 9, 89k pot with the pocket tens. So on the flop, he, you know, he just bet for value. On the turn, he's thinking, well, it's not the greatest turn. I want to slow down. I don't just want to check ace king or pocket eights here. I want to check some really good stuff too. So he slow played basically the nuts. And then Katya was thinking, well, I want to set up like a bet bet hand bet, bet betting strategy in which OTB will often check call, check fold. But the hand selection is a little bit aggressive for sure. So I'll give OTB a, a 9 out of 10, and I'll give Katya a... Hmm. I mean, it depends, right? If Katya believes that OTB is just super nitty, he could turn lots of these hands into a bluff. But this is a little bit aggressive. I like the fact that he just called preflop, then four bet, but the barrel off is a little bit ambitious. So I'll give Katya a 5. So. But Katya is a very, very strong, clever player. So he may have known something I didn't at the time. But I remember playing this hand, and at the time I was like, ooh, that's quite aggressive. I mean, I was sitting on his direct right. Candela min raises, and Candela is a pretty good player, actually. There used to be a rumor going around that he was a, a famous ooh. basketball player from Argentina, but I don't think that's true. However, there is uh, there's some uh, some famous guys playing high-stakes uh, poker, like behind the, behind these online screen names. OTB three bets, a bit on the smaller side. 
money in the bank. I used to think it was Linda Bank, but it's clearly money in the bank. And not the bank, the bank. Flops king, queen, deuce, which is very good for OTB because he's going to have kings and queens always. You know, he's going to have king, queen a lot. You know, just a lot of good stuff. So Candela is way behind on this board. OTB, therefore, bet small, likely at a very high frequency. Looks good to me. And Candela, which means candle in Spanish, calls. The three doesn't change anything. And OTB happily bets big again, which I like. I like the fact that he doesn't go for like a three or four K bet. Good stuff. Pretty standard. And on the river, I mean, there's 24 and a half K behind effectively. So I think that if OTB has end like ace king, he can still shovel. And, and sometimes he loses to end like king 10 of clubs or, you know, like whatever. Maybe uh, Candela has a set of queens, but so be it. I think if he has end like ace king, he can still go in, which he does. And Candela calls. So Candela probably has something like two pair. And OTB has a straight, so he got there in the river, and Candela has ace-king. So a very good play by both of them. Candela can sometimes four bet, but I like just calling a lot as well sometimes. And then with this hand, you know, you can chop with ace-king, maybe beat ace-queen. You can beat bluffs like 10-9 or some random stuff. So I think Candela should be calling down. And OTB made a good play as well. He just, you know, he just OTB'd Candela on the river. He just he just got there. So um, I would say... 9.5 9, 9 out of 10 for both guys. So, good stuff.